guys, I was just walking out my house and I hear these people on the street going, oh, the smell, it is pouring out poison. Like, what are they talking about? And I get to the top of my path, they're looking at my car. And I'm holding a tiny vulnerable little puppy in all of this poison stench. And I just look at them and then I look at my door and I just hop in the driver's side. And they walk off and I live on a small road. I've never seen these people before. They do not live here. I think they're someone's ugly fat grandparents. So if they're yours, can you please keep them in check? Because my car does not deserve to be spoken to like that on its own property. When you think about it, when you're in your friend's room and you're looking at their bed, you are looking at the place where they are their most vulnerable. Like they have their emotional breakdowns in there. They have probably like things in there. They sleep there. They curl up unconscious there every night. It's their trusted place. And you're going to come in there and sit on it with your outdoor clothes on. People who do that, I really personally have a distaste for you. Because why do you care about me so little that you're willing to come in and put poopy air from the London Underground on my sheets that I'm supposed to snuggle up in? You can look at the one, like, one square metre in which I feel safe and you think to yourself, let me just cover it in poopy air. It couldn't happen. It couldn't happen. And if any of my close loved ones ever tried to do it to me, I don't know what I'd- You know, I can actually pinpoint the moment I became homophobic because my ex-girlfriend once turned to me and she said, do you think you're prettier than me? And I said, no, I really like the way you look. I really like the way I look, but we look completely different. And she said, oh my God, you do. You think you're prettier than me. I said, I didn't say that. And then she was like, I can't believe you think you're prettier than me. And I was like, I don't, but this shows that you think you're prettier than me and you're deeply offended that I might think otherwise. And now I am breaking up with you. And then I stayed with her for another year, didn't I, Bugs? It's actually insane that we don't get breaks. Like, you've been alive since you were born. And you forget chunks of your life, but you've always just been there. Look at a bit picture of you as a baby right now. Have that image in your mind. You haven't stopped since then. I seriously thought I was going to die about 20 minutes ago. I was walking through a dark parking lot in Crawley. If you don't know Crawley, Crawley's not esteemed for its people. It's actually not esteemed for anything. And as I'm walking through it, I hear a Madeline come from like a completely dark car. I think, oh! and I look in as I walk past and it's like this guy just sat in there by himself in like a fucking night tech. I think, oh my God. And I keep walking, I keep my head down and then I hear a Madeline RG and he like gets out the car and I'm like, oh my God. I glance back behind me, he's walking towards me and he goes, no, I've got something for you. I've got something for you. What do you have? Is it a knife to the sphincter? for me like what have you got anyway for some reason i stop walking and i turn around and i'm like yeah and he, <laughs> so he cracks a little smile and he's like oh, look i've got these i make them they're the girliest fucking perfumes i've ever seen in my life he was like i make them i have a business like they smell really good they last all day and just hands them to me in this bag and i was like oh thank fucking god honestly made my day and they do smell good like i wish he'd labeled them because i'd like to purchase this one and i have no idea what it's called don't don't call my name from inside dark and cars and cruelly. What the fuck? I'm not gonna turn around and be like, yeah. So if my body can grow an entire another body from scratch, it can grow a baby's pancreas and kidneys and teeth and hair and eyeballs. But if I gouged out my eyeball right now, I wouldn't know how to grow me another one. It wouldn't regenerate my arm if I cut it off, but it would grow countless babies' arms. Why don't babies cry when they're in the womb? Because I just watched a video when a baby came out in the sack and then all they did was burst the sack and the baby was breathing in the amniotic fluid or something and then it was breathing air. So the only thing that changes in the moment when the baby is born is now it breathes air. Nothing changed for the baby. So when the babies get fully developed, why don't they start crying in the mother's womb? Why? How do they know they're out here now? Oh, they've got no air in their lungs to scream. <laughs> when I was seven, I had what most people on this app would refer to as a bit of a menti bee. I got pulled out of my school, put into a new school, expelled from that school, got homeschooled, and then got put back in my original school. But my original school wouldn't let me back unless I had just this woman with me all the time. This woman was not an employee of that school. She was sent from the mental health services. You remember those kids in primary school that just always had a woman sat next to them in class? Yeah, that was me. I didn't need any academic help. This woman was literally just there to make sure that I didn't gnaw my own arm off. It's my first day. No one has seen or heard from me in an entire year, and nobody knows that I'm in the room. We're doing the register, and she gets to my name. She says, Madeline, the whole whole class they turn their head they look at me gasps silence pennies dropping who's next to me fucking sharon anyway i make two friends that day and they say to me right when the lunch bell rings we're meant to line up with the class but do you just want to run down to the lunch hall with us really quickly so that we'll get there first i say fuck yeah i need to establish myself in this institution somehow when the lunch bell rings we jump into action we sprint down to the food hall except there's not three of us is there there's four of us because i am followed closely by a large blonde woman catches up to us grabs me by my arm spins me around gets down on her knees and says when the lunch bell rings we have to line up with the class okay we don't just run down to the lunch hall and i said i know you cunt that's why i was running right an innocent man doesn't tend to sprint i know what i'm doing and these girls that i was running with they look at me and i go oh. deep shame and actually i was never friends with them again they didn't chat to me the rest of school from that point forth i had no friends thanks sharon if i could actually remember this woman's name i would 100 percent find her on facebook and send her pictures of my ass cheek get fucked i never could rebuild my street cred after that
actually no let me tell you the whole story of how i got yelled at so badly at my old job that a customer who was eating at the restaurant at the time overheard the whole thing and then offered me a job with him because he felt that bad for me right i was 16 and i worked at a pub this table comes in i sit them down they're like a big they're like there's like six people right they tell me that they are celiac and that any gluten-free item that they order off the menu has to genuinely be gluten-free now i know that i work in a fucking shithole and that there is going to be gluten everywhere on everything right i've seen the chef previously like dump a whole fucking chicken fillet on a veggie meal and then just like i'm like that's veggie and then they take the chicken off right like they're not careful they don't give a fuck in the kitchen right i go down to the kitchen menu in hand i point at the meal that they want and i say chef can you please make this gluten free right they're celiac he yanks me and the menu across the bar divider where he put the food and he goes gluten fucking free you fucking bleep I cut that word out because it's a slur, right? The kitchen is not very far away from the main dining area. I'm talking like literally three steps away, right? So I know that the entire restaurant has just heard what's gone down in here. I say, I take the menu back, I say, thank you, chef. And I walk around and I turn up and why I'm greeted by about 50 eyes, right? The whole restaurant has just heard what's gone on. My manager, my coworkers, my mother who was sat at the bar having a drink and about 50 strangers, right? And they're all, look, it's silence. You can hear a fucking pin drop. I walk to the waitress station, I pick up a pad and a pen and I start writing gibberish down. I'm just trying not to cry because if I look at a single person, if I say a single word, I'm going to fucking bawl my eyes out. He yelled at me so bad. My manager comes up to me and I liked my manager at this point. And he says, are you okay? And I just literally told him to fuck off. And I walk back to the table. I just want to do my job. I just want to, you know, thug it out. I go back to my table and I say, I'm really sorry. He can't make it gluten free for you because I don't trust. He's not going to make this shit gluten free. They're going to fucking die, right? I say, I'm really sorry. He can't make it gluten free for you. They start yelling at me. Like they didn't just fucking hear what I've been through. They start yelling at me. And as I'm stood there, the most horrifying thing happens. I can't help it. A tear rolls down my cheek. Yes, no, a real tear, a real liquid tear rolls down my cheek and my chin starts wobbling. And one of the daughters, I think she was about 20, she notices and she tells her mum to stop. I then give them directions to a nice place, which is like literally a minute down the road. They can walk there. I'm like, look, they're gonna take care of you there. Just run for your fucking lives because I swear if you eat here, you will die. It's that simple, like you'll die. Like most people that eat here die. You will definitely fucking die. Anyway, I then bawled my eyes out for a good 20 minutes in the toilet. I was unconsolably crying right like i like not like oh i'm sad like i'm having a fucking panic so i was so freaked out like he this is a big man screaming at me and i was a frail 16 year old remember and then um a man saw everything go down he offered me a job and then i worked for him until i got fired that's the only time i've ever been fired he didn't really fire me he just called me a twat and said you can't work for me anymore you never turn up and i said you guys have solved one of my longest standing and worst insecurities. My worst insecurity is that people actually fucking just think I'm ugly and stupid and dumb and they just don't tell me that to my face. But then you guys told me that to my face and now I feel like every time you gas me, it's actually maybe real. I posted that video of me bald and everyone was like, oh my god, Queen, you look so good. And I was like, okay, now I know you guys are just fake as fuck. And then I posted a picture of me in year seven and I had a bob and not one person complimented me at my frail 11 year old body no one person complimented it they were like you look like a little boy the glow up is real there's hope for everyone bitch have some fucking decorum that's still me did you guys know it's possible to just go deaf like just immediately go deaf it is because it happened to me once right i was sat at the kitchen table and my hearing in this ear just like cut out and because like nothing bad ever happens to me like that's literally not possible i was like okay i'm gonna go take a nap and sleep this one off it'll be better when i wake up and like to no one's surprise i woke up and my ear was bleeding and giving like some kind of like gooey substance excrement vibe obviously not an ideal situation but i had a flight to catch to america in 40 hours so against everyone's better judgment i got on a high altitude flying tube all the way to the land of the expensive healthcare and i get there and i'm thrown immediately into the job that i'm doing so i'm like busy and i say a couple times to the woman that owns the place that i'm working i'm like i think i should go to the er like my ear's been bleeding for a week and i am deaf and she's like you're fine like just wait till the on-site nurses get here they'll be here in a week and i was like do you know what just something in my gut tells me i should get this scene too so i am gonna take the day and i'm gonna go so i go and i get charged 200 dollars for walking through the doors and then a man looks in my ear and looks me in my face and says, yeah, you're not going to get your hearing back, sorry. He was like, this specific thing needs to be, like, cured within 24 hours or you're just not going to get your hearing back. And I burst into tears, obviously. And then the guy who took me to the ER, he took me to go get a donut. And there is a very horrible picture of me in Dunkin' Donuts, like, just been told I'm deaf for life. A few days later, I went to an ear specialist and they put me in this glass box and then they were like, okay, let us know when you can hear the beeping. And like 30 seconds later, I looked to the left to see these two very concerned faces on the outside of the box. They're like, you can't hear the beeping. I'm like, I can't hear the beeping. Then they send me into a room with a man wielding the largest I've ever seen in my life. And he gives me some 
And then he gives me a week course of them. And if you were one of the 13 children that I was taking care of that summer, just know I was off my ass, fully off my fucking rocker for a week. I don't know what was in these. But it was brilliant because this was quite a stressful job and the kids were kind of pissing me off and suddenly nothing mattered. And they did bring back my hearing by like 20%. So then I was just relieved. I was like, fuck it, I don't care. I was like, if there's even a slight cure for this, like, because basically people were telling me like, by people I mean Google was telling me like, if you have this in one ear, at any point you could just lose it in the other ear as well. And I was like, bitch, I can deal with one ear being gone. I cannot deal with both. That's why I was like crying and stressed the whole time. Not because one had gone, but I was like, if the other one goes, I'm literally gonna... And then I came back to England, um, like a month or two later, and I went to the GP and she gave me a fucking nasal spray. She was like, try this. It worked. I left the States with $700 in medical fees. 700. For context, my summer job paid me $500 for seven weeks of work. Okay? You guys don't understand how heartbroken I am. Two and a half years ago, I got my braces on and the day before I got my braces on, bear in mind, I was bald, right? There was no hair on my scalp. The day before I got my braces on, I filmed the first half of a thirst trap. So I showed my bald head and my very, very crooked teeth and I made the first half of a thirst trap transition. I don't know what possessed me to do that because I didn't have TikTok downloaded on my phone. I didn't even have an Instagram account back in these days. So like, I don't know what the fuck, but somewhere in my little head, I was like, I think future me is gonna want this, this footage. And she was right. She didn't quite know how right she was. But anyway, I've lost the footage. I was bald. I was bald and I had crooked teeth. Two and a half years ago and then we could cut to today. When I'm obviously the sexiest human alive. Do you know what I mean? Best thirst trap ever. But no. This is so embarrassing but I've been whitening my teeth. But I've only been whitening the top ones. Because um, I don't have the trays for the bottom ones yet. And I've been using the teeth whitening filter on this app. So that you can't, <laughs> so that you can't see this. Because it evens it out. But look. Do you guys want to know the single weirdest experience I've had in this lifetime? I went shopping in Australia in this little market and there was a guy behind the counter. I go in, I'm looking at his stuff and I flash him a little smile and then he kind of like locks eyes on me and he goes, you are lovely. He was being a bit creepy, but like my mum was with me, so I didn't feel that uncomfortable. We got talking, I ended up telling him that I'm actually an Australian citizen and I was considering moving to Australia. All the while, I'm looking through these clothes and he's telling me, take them, like take them, take them, take them, try them on, they're gonna look amazing on you. So I start trying all these on, we're having this conversation and he ends up giving me three outfits for free, along with a fuck ton of jewellery, right? He looks me dead in the eyes and he's like, you are so gorgeous. I think you're supposed to be my daughter-in-law. I feel this connection with you. You are my daughter-in-law. And then pulls up a picture of his son. And he's like, look, my son is gorgeous. You should date him. You should be my daughter-in-law. And in all fairness, his son was gorgeous. I did consider it for a second. He asked me what my favorite color was and then told me he was going to paint the spare bedroom in his house that color. He said I have a bedroom in his home, a job at his shop, and that he would help me get into the University of the Sunshine Coast. And that I could marry his son. No one consulted his son in this whole process. His son is not present. All the while, I'm not going to tell him that, like, none of this is going to fucking happen because he's giving me so much free stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to marry your son and move into your spare room. Like, this is logical. He was from fucking Dartford. Like, he was just, like, a normal guy. Oh, well, obviously not that normal. But, like, I think about that all the time. What would have happened if I just, like, took him up on it? Do you guys realize it makes no fucking sense that we don't live underneath the ground? Why would we build our houses? Why would we build civilization on the top of the earth? Just exposed like that. Do you know how much could be avoided? We would avoid tsunamis. We would avoid earthquakes would probably still be a problem actually, but we would avoid tornadoes. We would avoid extreme weather conditions. Like everything would just be better if we were just underneath. Why would we? Do You're telling me as well, the first human beings that like spawned, the first intelligent ones, they still genuinely thought a cave was smarter than just digging. And they could dig from like early days. That, like remember, like digging is not hard. They could dig and instead they're seeing tigers, leopards, ostriches, fucking like dinosaur ancestors. And they're still thinking, yep, let's stay on the same level as these guys. We'll go in a cave. That is literally fucking stupid. You're dumb. You're, you're so dumb. I just watched a video of a girl basically saying that she sometimes forgets we're all living on the same plane of time. So whilst there's a man directing a music video, she's also somewhere pumping gas or doing a math test. And then in the future, when she watches that music video, she's also kind of re-experiencing the moment in time where she was doing something completely different. And the only thing that separates those two things is physical distance, but she was actually present in that moment of time. And I've always thought about how there are always things happening out in the world that are gonna benefit you so far down the line and you have no idea that they're happening at this very moment. Like you might be having a shit day today and somewhere out there is the most perfect pair of jeans being sewn together that one day is gonna fall into your clutches, be it through a shop or a charity shop or a friend and they're being sewn together right now. And one day when you were a little innocent baby, you were probably playing, maybe you were a toddler, maybe you were even a bit older, a little baby was born and it was the love of your life. That sounds kind of creepy when I say it like that. 
But like you were just an innocent little baby, maybe crying, screaming, who knows what you were doing. And you were completely oblivious that the love of your life was just born. You're having the best day ever technically and you don't even know it. Or like maybe one day as a little baby, you were laughing or crying or who knows what. And you did it in sync with the person that you're now in love with. Like at some point, you probably laughed in sync at two completely different places in the world. You had no idea who the other one was. You're giggling in sync and you don't even know it. Or you're crying yourself to sleep in sync. Do you know what? It's sweet. Like there's always so much going on in the world that you're unaware of that affects you. Or that maybe you'll never even know it affects you, but it does. And it's something to do with you somehow. And even when you think nothing's happening, nothing's going on, it literally might be the best day of your life and you're so unaware. Like someone might have just got a job today that is somehow gonna so deeply benefit you in the future that is gonna make so many things come together for you. You're on your ass today, you've not done fucking anything. Someone out there's just done something that you're gonna do something with one day and like stuff's always happening. The universe never stops.